Oh, we'd like to hear from Rabbi Samuels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one second. Let's hear from the rabbi. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, I just want you to know that I know Rabbi Minkowitz since he's a little, little boy. His father is one of my best friends in the world. And... What kind of kid was he like? Troublemaker? Huh? Troublemaker as a kid? No. Very good kid. Always been. <laughs> oh, yeah, always been a very, very good kid. So it's, so it's starting off by not saying... No, no, I'm telling you. He's, he, 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 he's the best. And one guy even told me there's nobody like Rabbi Minkowitz. One guy in the back that I put on film with, he said, nothing like Rabbi Minkowitz. So I'd like to share with you a little thought about a very famous story and a very interesting explanation for the story. Everybody heard it about Shem Tov. And one of the things the Baal Shem Tov is famous for that he went to visit the Mashiach in heaven, in the palace where Mashiach sits. And he went into his palace and he said, when are you coming? And Mashiach said, when your wellsprings will spread out everywhere, then I'll come. So the question is, there's a story like this in the Gemara too. The Gemara tells a story that there was a rabbi, his name was Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. And Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, every night, would study with Elijah the prophet, with Eliyahu Novi. One day he says to him, tell me, maybe you can tell me where Mashiach is, I'd like to visit him. Eliyahu Novi said, I'll tell you where he is. He's in the streets of Rome. He's wounded, he has a lot of suffering. He keeps doing and undoing his bandages. If you see a guy in the streets of Rome, that's Mashiach. So he travels to Rome, and sure enough, he notices there's a man sitting there with a lot of bandages of Mashiach. So he goes over to Mashiach and he says, when are you coming? And Mashiach says, I'm coming today. <laughs> oh, he got all excited. Mashiach said he's coming today. He waited and waited and waited, and the day went by, Mashiach didn't come, so the next night he's having his class with Elio. He says, remember you sent me to this guy, Mashiach? He's a liar. I said, what do you mean he's a liar? He says, yeah, I asked him when he's coming, and he said he's coming today, and he didn't come. He says, ah, you didn't understand what he said. There's a verse in the Torah that begins with the words, today if you will listen to my voice, in other words, if you listen to what Hashem says, that's what he meant. If everybody listens to what Hashem says, then I'll come. Okay, that's the story the Talmud tells. So the question is, the Baal Shem Tov knew the story too. Everybody knows it. You ask a little kid in school, say, when is Mashiach coming? When everybody does what they're supposed to do, Mashiach will come. So why is the Baal Shem Tov all of a sudden? He goes into the palace of Mashiach and he says, when are you coming? What do you mean, when am I coming? I already said, I'm coming when everybody does whatever they're supposed to be doing. And the answer that Mashiach gives is a funny answer. He says, when your wellspring spread out, but that's a new answer. He said already before, I'm going to come when everybody does the right thing. What's this with the wellsprings? So this is the answer. Mashiach, I mean, the Baal Shem Tov, you know what he did? He went around and he visited Jewish communities all over. And he would gather the Jews and speak to them, inspire them. But you know what the Baal Shem Tov developed? An appreciation of how special the Jews are, like you guys. You come here in the morning to Davim, I mean, you're the most special people in the, in the world. In spite of everything that we're going through, in spite of all the difficulties of the exile, in spite of all the difficulties we have, in spite of that, the Jews are doing their best of trying. You know what? The Baal Shem Tov came to the conclusion, considering the difficulties of the Jewish people in the exile, the Jewish people are listening to what Hashem said. I mean, of course they could do better, but look at what a difficult exile they learn. So therefore he came to Mashiach and he said, Mashiach, you know, I checked out in the world, everybody's doing whatever they're supposed to be doing. Whatever they're not doing is because of the difficulties of the exile. It's not their fault. So why aren't you coming? So Mashiach looked at the Baal Shem Tov and he said, when everybody thinks like you, then I'll come. When everybody looks at the Jewish people 
and sees how wonderful they are, they don't come. When your wellspring spread out everywhere and everybody sees how special every Jew is, ah, of course, they don't come. And that's what Rabbi Minkowitz was sent here by the Rebbe to bring out the best in all of you. And I see he's doing a wonderful job and God should give him a lot of strength and money to be able to accomplish for many years to come and make uh, the whole South, what is it, Southeast Florida? Southwest. Southwest Florida, ready to welcome the Mashiach speedily in our day. Amen. Amen. Rabbi, it's Kayak. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What are you here, though? <laughs> no, no. Vade, last your last words. You want to say anything else while you're on camera? So I can just say that yeah. the the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And Rabbi Minkowitz is a great honor to his family. I know his father and his mother. I even call his mother Taya the Shoshana. That's what her name is by me. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, should, they should be healthy and well for many years to come. And uh, Rabbi Minkowitz should give them lots and lots of nachas. Amen. Skayach. Skayach. No is the music. Love music even more. Amen. Oil and oil. Kachoyu. The Mashoba.